Hi, my name is Jesse Terkipego, and I'm about to give a presentation on the American Colonization Society. The American Colonization Society, founded in 1816, was made to assist free black people in immigrating to Africa. This was the brainchild of Reverend Robert Finley, a Presbyterian minister from Basking Ridge, New Jersey. According to the Library of Congress, Robert Finley was born in 772 in Princeton, New Jersey. He was a man of great intelligence as he graduated from Princeton University at the age of 15. He worked as a teacher and he taught theology in several places, including Charleston, South Carolina, where many slaves exist. He then became a licensed minister in 1794, and in 1795, he was ordained as a pastor of the Presbyterian Church at Basking Ridge, where he served for 20 years as a popular preacher and noted educator, and he also originated the concept of the modern Sunday school curriculum. Prior to the formation of the American Colonization Society, many Americans had recognized the presence of many freed Negroes as a race problem. Many American citizens had voted for the Negro's liberty, but no one wanted his company. Clearly, emancipation was not a solution at all. At first, policy regarding freed ex-slaves suggested treating them as the same as Indians, settling them beyond the Rocky Mountains. However, it was too expensive and an alternative was needed. By 1808, the legal importation of slaves in America had ceased. And at the time, Americans closely associated with the British in anti-slave trade activities. After the British outlawed slave trade in 1807, the British began selling their freed slaves in Liberia, especially slaves they had freed from slave ships. At the same time, many states had recognized their Negro population as a problem. For example, in 1813, the Virginia legislature met secretly to ask her governor to ask President Jefferson for a place for their slaves in Africa. Thus, in 1816, Robert Finley appears in Washington, full of the spirit of benevolence that was sweeping the country, to present his agenda for the American Colonization Society, which initially was to provide home for the 20,000 slaves freed by New Jersey's law, among other freed slaves in Africa. Fortunately, Robert Finley found many as benevolent as himself, and thus the American Colonization Society was formed. Upon its conception, the ACS was met with immediate and continuous objections from African Americans who wished to remain in the land of their birth. They also saw colonization as a racist strategy for protecting slavery and purging the United States of its black citizens. However, since the American Colonization Society received great support from religious organizations in both state and local governments, its survival was ensured. In 1818, the first expedition by the ACS was made when Reverend Salmon Mills and Ebenezer Burgess were sent to Africa to purchase land for the ACS. The expedition reported favorable soil and climate conditions. However, Samuel Mills died on the way back as a result of a fever he contracted in Liberia. As a result of the favorable report from Reverend Samuel Wills, another expedition was conducted in 1820 when two ACS agents, two government officials, and their black charges left for the island of Sherbo, south of Liberia. However, fever strikes again and shakes the party to pieces and forces abandonment of the settlement. But it was until Reverend Ashman's expedition to Liberia that colonization was brought to the realm of reality. Reverend Ashman was a man of genius and intelligence. In 1821, he left Baltimore with African American immigrants to be settled in Liberia. Between 1825 and 1826, Reverend Ashman took the necessary steps to, to lease, annex, or buy tribal lands along the coast and on major rivers, leading inland from African leaders. Reverend Ashman did not hesitate to use force to extend the colony's territories. Most of these negotiations resulted in him cocking his guns at the heads of the African leaders. His aggressive actions quickly increased Liberia's power over its neighbors and the colony began to flourish. He, he managed to found a thriving settlement that was actively involved with trade between, with the British and Americans. The settlement had churches, schools, and an army, and people observed the Sabbath and did not involve in profanity. By 1832, exports from Liberia had totaled $88,911, and six vessels sailed from the United States to Liberia with more former African American slaves to be settled in, the, in Liberia. With Reverend Ashman's success in establishing a settlement, 
The ACS completely ignored the mortality of the immigrants arriving in Liberia. Immigrants in, Li in Liberia suffered the highest recorded mortality rate in accurately recorded human history. Of the 4,571 immigrants who arrived in Liberia from 1820 to 1843, only 1,819 immigrants survived until 1843. The organization continued to send people to Liberia while very much aware of the chances for survival. The ACS blatantly considered themselves benevolent and they totally disregarded this sad fact of colonization since they believed there were humanitarians performing the work of God. And since the ACS wasn't as benevolent as stated, in 1833, abolitionist Arthur Chapman resigned from the ACS to unite abolition forces in the American Anti-Slavery Society. In 1834, benevolent societies formerly of the ACS decided to hold a meeting in Chapman Street Chapel in New York, addressed by Arthur Chapman. And the meeting's key note was, we are now attending the funeral of the American Colonization Society. By the 1840s, Liberia had become a financial burden on the ACS, and because the U.S. refused to claim sovereignty over Liberia, the ACS ordered Liberia to proclaim its own independence in 1846.